Can you tell us your story? So who is Sizi? Where, where do you come from? So I was born in China mm -hmm. and then I moved to Canada when I was 12 and then I went, spent six years in Vancouver, four years in Montreal. After university, I went to Tokyo to work. I worked in Tokyo for four years and then, in Mont uh, and then went to New York for four years to work for Bloomberg. And then uh, in 2005, I returned to, China, to Shanghai to do a startup together with uh, five other founders. So there's six partners in the, in the, in the startup. That company is still there. Um, so, and um, in 2013, I decided to leave that company after eight years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I decided to jump full into crypto. Oh, it, back then, it was called the Bitcoin industry. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, I, and then in 2000, early uh, mid 2017, I decided to do Binance, um, and uh, we got very lucky. It grew very quickly. So for me, it's like a 20-year journey. So how did you go into the trading in the first place? So myself, I was never really involved in trading even today. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually a very bad trader. I don't know how to trade, but I know how to do trading systems. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, so I, I think of myself more like the blacksmith that's making the sword for mm -hmm. people to, 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 with Kung Fu masters to use. Mm -hmm. So I was always making those trading tools. So systems, I come from a programming uh, background. So, uh, so I've been doing that for 20 years, but never really trading myself. So every time I try to I try to trade myself, it never worked. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you lose all the money, or you just can't transfer it? <laughs> uh, no, I do, I, 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 do, I usually lose money. But how did you first heard about the Bitcoin industry? Yeah, so um, I first learned about Bitcoin from uh, uh, Bob Billy and Ron Cao. Mm -hmm. Bob Billy was the CEO of BTC China. Mm -hmm. So um, before they disbanded that, that exchange, and Ron Cao was his uh, institutional investor. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time, Ron Cao was with Lightspeed Ventures. Right now, he runs uh, Sky9 Capital. Uh, both of them are very good friends of mine. I've known them for uh, like three or four years before uh, 2013. So mm -hmm. I know them like from 2008, 2009 ish. Mm -hmm. um, so when they asked me to look into it, and Ron's uh, investing in Bobby, BTC China, and the whole thing looks really good, and I looked into it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that turned for me was the uh, Vegas conference in December 2013. Um, so I went there, yeah, I went to Vegas to learn about Bitcoin um, and met a bunch of people. Vitalik there, was there, uh, Charlie Lee was there, uh, Matt, Matt Rosick was there, Brock Pierce was there, and a bunch, the same crew. But it was really a group of nice people. They're, they're not money driven, they're very nice. Uh, so after that conference, I said, okay, if this is the group of people uh, in this community, and I know the technology worked, um, the encryption, asymmetric in encryption, private key, etc. So I understood those quite easily. But it was, the, it was the community that said uh, that 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 made me decide. Okay, if wow. this is the community that's around, I'm very happy to uh, join this industry, and I know that it will be the future. So I know in the, it's basically it's like discovering the internet in 19 in uh, uh, in 1989. So this is the community that got you into the space in the first place. Yes. Is it still the same community? Uh, it's still pretty much the same community. It's much bigger now. Mm -hmm. So the, those same group of guys are now K uh, KOLs or knowledge leaders in, in our space that people look up to. The industry definitely have grown a lot. Uh, back then, I think that conference was maybe like 100 people. Mm -hmm. So the conference today is like 3,500 on this little island. So the industry has gone much, much bigger now. There are a lot of opinions that the crypto and blockchain community uh, has become more toxic. Huh. or more greedy, do yeah. you agree with that? Because the community is much larger, so there are some bad players. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, uh, there are some uh, money-driven people who, who are more pure profit-driven, and some of them even go to the worst extent of being scams or lying, stuff like that. So there are, there, there are, there are those players, but I think by and large, the community is healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's definitely more uh, good players than there are bad players. So, and also if we should not have any delusions that if, even in any industry, even in a very mature banking industry, mm -hmm. there are bad players, right? Very recently, uh, a, a bank um, was fined for uh, uh, laundering like $235 billion. That's bigger than the entire crypto market cap. So you could say they're, they're worse players in the traditional industries, <laughs> right, by far. Can you explain me what is the difference between building a trading system for traditional financial markets yeah. and building a system for a crypto exchange market? I think the biggest difference is the wallet uh, or the funds management. Mm -hmm. So historically, you will interface with a bank API. So you will, uh, you will do reconciliation with a bank. Uh, and uh, you have to go with the bank's API and bank schedule. Uh, today, we interface almost exclusively with blockchains. When you're dealing with banks, you, de you depend a lot on the business negotiations or the business mm -hmm. side of it. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas in blockchain now, there's no business to discuss. The blockchain cannot reject us. Uh, but you, we do have a lot of uh, new blockchains now, especially with people switching to mainnets. Uh, so some of them are less stable, some of them are uh, technically, um, there are technical issues. So there's two different sets of issues. Um, and uh, uh, with uh, traditional uh, exchanges, the money is with, at the bank. So as a technology system, there's not a whole lot. We, uh, uh, the, uh, the security requirements actually lower. Uh, basically, you can fake somebody's order, but the, min the impact is quite minimal. And uh, if you try to uh, wire money out of the bank, the bank can reverse the transaction. Uh, come to blockchain, crypto, uh, you got to be really, really secure. So the security requirement is much, much tougher. You've mentioned that your team is quite distributed. Yes. Right? So different yeah. cities, different time zones. Yeah. How do you cope with that? So it is a challenge. But now I think we, got, we, we, we found, a, we found a, like a medium or... Uh, uh, distributed teams are definitely less efficient than a centralized team in one place. And th this is the same for uh, blockchain networks or teams. It's all the same. So, but we, we now use chats a lot. We have lot, we have tons and tons of chat groups. We use almost every chatting tool out there. We, have, we use every video conferencing tool out there. Um, so uh, we, we, we have a way that it works now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's the future for businesses? So I think there's definitely going to be more and more decentralization, even in the team structure of businesses. But um, a centralized team is always, uh, especially when you're small, it's much easier to organize and much more efficient. So there are trade-offs. So I'm not exactly sure you'll be fully, the fully decentralized uh, is the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are your plans for the future in terms of the finances and exchanges as a company? Sure, sure. So basically, we just want to provide a few infrastructure services in the blockchain space. Right now, our core business is the exchange. So right now, we run a crypto-to-crypto -crypto centralized exchange. Mm -hmm. And we're, doing, uh, we're, doing a, uh, we're working on a number of fiat-to-crypto exchanges so that we can bring the fiat, uh, we can open the fiat gateway into crypto. On the flip side, we are working on our decentralized exchange. Oh. Uh, those two are not in conflict. Right, so we're trying. We're giving users options. We're giving our community options. With a decentralized exchange, we're taking a very different approach. Now we don't manage uh, customer assets. Mm -hmm. So you hold your own private key. Uh, we don't know about it. Uh, we don't want to know about it. And then um, uh, it's a decentralized. Uh, you can run a node yourself. So we don't fully control the network, which is the crypto sort of uh, way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're doing both. So uh, that's our core business, which we know well, which is the, or at least I personally know well. Mm -hmm. Other than that, so by, uh, Binance Labs, <coughs> uh, their mission is to invest in projects I, we don't know too well. So for example, wallets, uh, for example, payment systems, uh, gaming, uh, anything else. Uh, so I believe that for we, want to, we want to manage businesses that we know well closely, mm -hmm. but the businesses that we don't know well, we should let experts do their own, or own work. So labs will typically take a minority stake in projects. So they will invest, will become a minority uh, invest, uh, shareholder or not even a shareholder owner. Um, and uh, we just try to do whatever we can to help the project succeed. And, but we're not the drivers. Uh, the project team are the drivers. So we want to help uh, and we want to invest in infrastructure projects. So projects that will help build basically roads, buildings uh, in this industry. So anything that's infrastructure related. So I think we're still in the early stages of this industry. So that's kind of what we want, what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a few other initiatives, um, like uh, Info is a, info, uh, uh, a portal for uh, different information about coins. Uh, we have um, a charity, which is a very important social uh, impact uh, program for us. So um, uh, the Binance uh, Fun Charity Foundation is partnered with uh, President of Mota's uh, charity uh, initiative and a bunch of other initiatives. You are famous for being um, a very open and honest person. Yeah. Like, in a good way, a rock star of the industry. <laughs> Do you know how, how t did you get to that point? Actually, it just happened so quickly that, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, to be honest, I didn't really know. I, I don't, even if I recall, I think it was, it was only in the last two conferences that I started getting mobbed by like people uh, trying to take selfies. I don't know why people want to tell, take selfies with me. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture. As well. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But I'm always happy to take to take selfies. I think all of those guys are our strong supporters, mm -hmm. and so I think we got to thank people who support us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think this whole thing just happened so quickly that I we I actually don't know how exactly uh, it happened at every, every every step. We didn't. We certainly did not plan it. Uh, if you ask me, like a year ago when we first started, I would say I would give you like maybe three three years, five years will become number one. But it happened in six months. 
So we got very lucky in a lot of places, but we worked really hard. Um, we we had the right values. We had the right. I think we had the right ethics that the community appreciated. In an industry where there's less regulation, you actually it's actually more important for you to do the right thing. So sometimes a regulation is very tricky because there's 200 different countries, each one slightly different. But the right thing, people would apply the common sense, uh, and it was quite easy to figure out. So we always protect the user's interest. We never participate in trading. We, never, we, we try our best not to list bad coins. We go through a very rigorous pro process to list, we think, only good coins. But again, it's subjective to some, to some extent. Uh, but we do all of those things trying to, uh, we work really hard to try to do those things. And I think our uh, supporters and users, uh, users are very smart now. They figure it out. And that's why they, uh, so that's why they like us. And I think there was a need, there was a very strong need for an exchange that wanted to do, operate everything properly. Mm -hmm. So I think the value system is a, uh, is a key ingredient that drove us to, to the success very quickly. But there's a lot of external factors that we got lucky on. Mm -hmm how to build a brand in the crypto industry, whether for a company or for a person. So I think basically it's exactly what you just said, which is you want to be, uh, you want to be transparent to the, to, to the maximum extent possible. Um, you want to be available. So you want to be available to your community to the maxim, maximum extent possible. You don't want to hide. You don't want to like say, hey, I'm, I'm above you guys and now you can't reach me, uh, even, even, even after you're successful. So, and most importantly, you, you want to establish strong trust. And this is not something you just say, right? So people are smart. I mean, you can say trust us, but people don't. Uh, but uh, what you got, people trust you through stuff you do. So you really want to put the user's interest ahead of yours. So I think uh, it's quite easy to make short-term gains in this industry, especially like last year with the ICOs going crazy. Uh, but um, and there will be more. Uh, there will be opportunities like that in the future as well. Uh, but I think uh, if you want, if you're honestly shooting for the long-term growth and building value, and being doing everything properly, people will understand. People will know. I think there's no there's no shortcuts to it. So that, I don't think there's any shortcuts to trust. You just got to earn it. You just got to build it. Um, so I think every decision you make, you, you got to think about it. So uh, we never take shortcuts on, on that. We we never we never do anything dodgy. We always said, okay, when we have a we have certain, certain values that when we make decisions, we ask ourselves, even as a group, say, okay, this decision, does it fit with our values of protecting users or doing the right thing? And uh, is it ethical? Is it, a, is it a fair thing to do? Sometimes you, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to tell if it's the most, um, uh, uh, so, so sometimes you have to argue from different angles to consider it, but we always choose the most ethical, most fair, most right thing to do. And over the long run, I think uh, especially because there are a lot of scammers, or there's some scammers in this industry, uh, that's actually good for, for anybody who wants to do a proper business because then you can differentiate yourself quite quickly, quite easily. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, it's actually not that hard in, the, in this industry. Yeah. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.